Everybody, how you doing? It's Trent Austin from Austin Custom Brass here on a Monday. It's a holiday, so I'm working alone today. I thought I'd do some videos. This is an incredible horn. Did you hear how fluid this horn is? This is, oh, let me turn my talking mic up just a little bit here. Hold on. Thank you. This is the Shoggle Ravini or Raven in beautiful custom finish. It has like an like a heat treated bell and then raw for the rest of it. I don't know if you see that. This is such an incredible horn. This is an, a, like a top action rotary horn, but the difference between this and the gonch horn is very, very clear. This has a full length B flat pipe. Now, if you were do, using doing the gonch horn, it would have actually just this length going right into the valve block. So this was designed um, with Carl and uh, James Morrison, a great, incredible, play every instrument, uh, you know, virtuoso. And he wanted a, a little bit freer blowing horn by putting the full lead pipe. You could do a lot of different dynamic things on this horn. Um, I think this horn is very much a chameleon. It could do pretty much anything you set your mind to it. It's indeed a soloist horn, but you could really like coax it and finesse it. This is a 4CS mouthpiece. So it's not really a, uh, it's not a big mouthpiece. It's not a small mouthpiece, but I can do a lot of colors on this horn with just one mouthpiece, which I think that's so cool. And of course the rotors, let me show you how the rotors activate. So you see, You'll hear that on the microphone, but it's very soft actually. And then you have your third valve trigger here. It's beautifully laid out. In actuality, this sits flat on a surface. I don't think I could show you without having to move stuff, but it does flit, uh, sit flat, which is really cool. Um, let me play some on this. Lo-fi. Warmed up. 
has great flexibility. And I, I just love the fact that these valves almost articulate for you. When you're doing chromatics, it almost sounds like they articulate. Check this out. Kind of ridiculously fun. So who would buy this horn? I think this horn, if you're putting it up, if you're playing in a big band trumpet section and you have you're next to a Kaliki or a Bach, this is going to be a little too dark, I think, overall. So this is really a soloist horn. However, I think you could actually play it in like a quint brass quintet sit situation because it's versatile enough to get a thick, rich sound. So say you were playing Oh gosh, it's been a long time since I've played this. Uh, it's been many a moon since I've tried to play the Arnold Brass Quintet, but uh, it's one of those things that this horn has that versatility. It also has the versatility to, to be a cornet, or if you wanted to play something like, this is from, I think, the Hindemith Symphony. Hold on, let me turn. something else like lyrical like that. I think that's really cool. It's almost cornetti, but not. It has that thickness, and especially in the way it just glides over the, the registers. And if you wanted to push it, it could push. It's just never gonna give you like that crisp lead trumpet sound, I don't think. Although, of course, when you hear James play it, he can do it. And I think it has the ability to punch, but just not maybe soar over an entire big band in the back row. So it, it just maybe doesn't have that full punch that you would expect in a trumpet, but it has so much more, so much more. I love this horn. We actually have two of these in stock. I think we have a silver plated one as well, but this one just, it, it strikes me as being so unique and cool. So there'll be a link in the description. You can check it out today. Check out those buttons, speaking of checking out. Thanks for watching this video. Hit that subscribe button. Stay up to date with us. We have so many more videos coming. Thanks so much and keep on keeping on. Cheers.